welcome to the very first edition of Coffee. Is it Coffee X Controllers or Coffee and Controllers? It's Coffee and Controllers. It's just a stylized experience. It's the show where we look into coffee and getting the most influential news and the games of the year. Today we have a banger lineup as we dive back into 1987 and we explore a small title that will revolutionize gaming forever. Right now, I have to brew up a nice cup of coffee and see myself out. Also, 1987 is the year we were born. It's a long time. So guys, this is how I make my coffee. And obviously the way I do my things is the right way to do things because I'm always right. So uh, I'm not gonna show you the brand of coffee because they don't pay us enough to do that. Uh, if anybody wants to give us coffee, uh, feel free. So this is a strong ish, ish, not strong, strong ish. Stands like a punch in Street Fighter. Just one, you only need one. One will get you through, let's say two hours of life, then so I put in the dry stuff first so that they can mix equally into the thing. Because you know when you put in the coffee, the water, and then the coffee, then the coffee just is on top. I don't like that nonsense. Only one, like a half sugar, because um, that white powder gets you up. <laughs> Jokes, guys, it's not drugs, I promise. And then um, uh, on set, they only give us oat milk. Uh, they don't give us the new milk. It's oat. No jokes, guys. You can eat everything. But the nut. Um, yeah, so I just just a dash of the thing because I still my coffee must be the color of my skin. I think I'm like a good color when it comes to determining what coffee must look like. Chadi, bring me water, please. Yeah, there's your water for your coffee. No, you pour oh, it yourself. A... No, that's your coffee. It's your segment. Chadi's being a bit of an I also just like the sound. The sound, the sound is like the opposite of an alarm. Like alarm wakes you up, this one gives you rest. Um, I need more oat milk over here. So this is like a this is like me in the summer. I'm going for me in the winter. Yeah, that's me in the winter right now. Um, and that's how I take my coffee. Hello and welcome to news from around the globe. Dem, 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 D23 happened this past weekend. The Disney event showcased some of the upcoming, the upcoming properties, pop -up properties, properties for the next year, ensuring the global media dominance. Yeah, Werewolf by Night, The Mandalorian season three, Tales of the Jedi, Willow, and of course, The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid can be any color we want, guys. It's yeah. not real. Okay. Of course, like all the trailers got dropped. All the trailers got dropped at the event. So like exciting things all around. As well as Marvel's upcoming Thunderbolt movie, the Loki season two, and the never ending story, the remake. I don't think I'm ready for the sadness that comes in the never ending story, the but it's all pretty, pretty sad. Yeah, it's the never ending trauma. But on the gaming front, we'll be moving to the Ubisoft Forward Conference, where they get to up announce all the upcoming properties. P -p properties. Properties. And in this case, it's like 90% just Assassin's Creed. We're not actually against it because Assassin's Creed was great. It was like movies that we just was a part of. We had Assassin's Creed Mirage that was announced, which will be the latest entry into the mainline franchise. We'll have a look at the trailer a little bit later. Then we move on to Assassin's Creed codename Jade, which is a new mainline mobile entry. And it's set in ancient China and you, the player, get to create your own protagonist, which is, sounds actually pretty dope. It's amazing. Next is Assassin's Creed, codenamed Hex, which seems to feature a lot of witches and witchcraft and fences. And then we're moving on to Assassin's Creed, codenamed Red. Now, for fans of the franchise, this is what we've been asking for for years. Assassin's Creed in Japan. I mean, a whole other studio had to make Ghost of Tsushima for them to realize, oh, actually, that's a good idea. So finally, this is happening. Amazing things. Then finally we got Assassin's Creed Infinity. You thought there was no more Assassin's Creed. There's still more. This is being described by the executive producer, Mark Alexis Cote. I'm going to assume it's like that. Yeah. Because he says, but uh, it's not a game per se. I'm assuming it sounds like that. But rather a single entry point for our fans into the Assassin's Creed franchise into the future. I don't know what that means, but... The man said it like that and sometimes when you're accent you must just believe him yeah and i think it's just like now you also gonna be an assassin like an actual assassin you're gonna you're gonna be in the game in the game 
per se. Nice. And as mentioned before, T23, not T12. And Ubisoft, they had a fast forward conference in this past weekend and we got to see a ton of new trailers. But we have limited time, so we get to choose what we gonna show you. Yeah, because it's our show, but it's for you. Be soft. Nice. My son sacrificed his life to save me. Oh no. Not the same. Why must I always say the color of the superhero? Because, like, then we can identify. Look at him. Look at this. Jamie Foxx vibes. But less blue. Also, the rock being the mummy. You've seen this version of the rock. And now it's just the rock being the rock. Like, look at this. I want, see, I want to see the rock punch people. Because <laughs> I watch a wrestling and the rock doesn't only punch people like that. But he's, he's a superhero now, so he has superpowers. So like, look at this. He's gonna punch a plane. Does that count? I'm actually getting chills when I watch this. I'm very sad uh, Queen Elizabeth is gonna be around to watch this, but yo, she's missing out. I didn't bring a passport. You don't need passports. Yeah. Why do you don't need passports? They just travel. <laughs> they just have planes under the gardens. That looks like they're also the X-Men. Black Adam. We're here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. This man pushed the whole ass helicopter into another one. What is this? This is excessive force. I'm here for it. Waste all this money. Nor do I surrender. Here we go. Oh, that's what we need in the world. You know what I also love about this? I know none of these people. These are these are new superheroes to me. These, oh, okay, okay. So these doctor fight to seek justice. But you have gone. You came to exact revenge. He's like he's 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 DC's version of also. I never said I was a graphics hero. looks amazing. Like they put the money and the time into this. It's nowhere close to this um, justice league nonsense we got. So what's interesting is so they made. They made it with less of that yellow blue that you get. Yeah. You know when they go to a foreign country? Is that the boys from two of the boys I love before? Yes! You can be the destroyer of this world. Who's that? 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 Who's but technically, no, if he's like from the Middle East, shouldn't be Black Adam. Adam. Black Adam. Guys, I'm excited for this. I just hope that they give us the good rating that we need. I don't want a 16 movie. I want to see violence. You don't want a 16 movie. Like, you, you mean you want like a, like a rated, I want ra a rated, movie. rated violence people must I want to see mood. the rock punch people. But that's not... Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. If they can just give me the right amount of violence, this movie is going to be a banger. <laughs> Oh, we like the games to 18. That's how it must be, because we're 18 now. So you see, here's the awesome. thing. I love when games look real, but at the same time, my game must look like this. Don't give me that Final Fantasy trailer looks nice. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And I'm at the you see them in Look at that Arabic. Back to basics. Ready to sacrifice everything you have clothes. So I mean, this isn't gameplay. This is just like I was gonna say, but it's a movie. Assassin's Creed never, never misses when it comes to the storyline and movies. They've always got this stuff together. Now they make it look good, like. Are you ready to leave your life behind and walk the path of shadows? I am. It's a cult. Oh yes, of course. Because nothing is cooler than parkour. Aladdin. We've seen this film. The opening scene in Aladdin. Oh. Oh, except he failed there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Wait, is that? Is that? Is that who I think it is? Oh, okay, no. I thought that this might be the... Oh, so the one? main character from the first game. Come back to save him now in this yeah. one. Yeah. I must actually take a second look at that. Oh no, it's not. It's Are they not. the same person? No, but they're dressed the same. The assassin was all dressed the same. 
Also, oh, no, it's not. Wow. How historically ab accurate is this game? It's, it's hard to say. Most times they get it right, though. As they, Assassin's Creed. They, they use, like... Yeah, this is... This is it off or just a mark? No. Can you cut it off? Never forget the tenets. Why would you... Why do you need to cut the finger off? Like, can't you just make a tattoo and say this one should be gone? No, because they, they have these hidden blades. And then it needs to come through that. So, we... <laughs> no, guys, just... It's fine. Oh, so is that what? Mm. Yep. I also love that there's no guns and it's like old school. Swords. Straight swords. Time to disappear. I love how they're not showing the game. No. But they, it's fully the game though. Yeah, it's like you, you. I'm invested in this. Like, I haven't played since like, Assassin's Creed 2. And I'll play them like more Assassin's Creed movies. Oh yeah, no, that, that was, those movies are bad. Yeah, but we do good. want this thing. I want this. That's violence. From this day forward. What is, is it with you and the violence? You are, are you okay? I choose violence. I was gonna say it's like races when they just go, but I go all oh, oh, of oh, that is seen, <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah, it's sitting by that and it's like that it as well. Ooh. Ooh, what is this? Uh -uh. What is this piece? No, this is Jinka. <laughs> uh -uh. So, uh, does Assassin's Creed deal with like monsters and stuff as well? No. Yes and no. I think they've been trying to like dive into that a little bit, like into the more mythological elements but from it, like the history because the first ones was very true to like history and what was happening so they didn't go with like mysticism yeah so, really... but i think i think they try to like play around with those elements or is and it I... just a mirage and you see is that necessary it's the, the name but, but like yeah it's i actually don't know what the name is like implying at all like what the mirage is mirage in the desert because you're in Baghdad. I think it's going to be in the storyline. If you're going to get to a point and you think you you reach the end and then you go, oh no. It's a mirage. And then you're at the bottom of the game. Well, maybe you're going to play as this brat, but like he thinks he's an assassin, but he's not an assassin. And it is all a mirage. Plot and he's just like a murderer. It's actually a great story. The year is 1987. The world is about to change forever. Because I was born. Shadow was also born that year, but I was born. And a little game called Metal Gear Solid would be launched on the MSX2, a console that never made it to South Africa. I don't even know what it looks like. Maybe it takes like cartridges or tablets. Bruh, first and foremost, it's Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear, and it would be ported to the Famicom. You know the, the Machat in the that we got here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that a few months later, and that's when it exploded, you know, because then we can we could also, as game popper, also experience it. It might not have hit the highs that the later games of the series would do, but the game managed to sell an impressive 1 million NES copies in the US. Do you know how much that is in today's ter terms? How much? A million copies still. That's great. <coughs> in the game, you can't travel Solid Snake, an operative of the Special Forces unit, Fox Sound, and you're sent to, uh, on a solo infiltration mission to the fortified state of out there heaven to destroy a Metal Gear, a walking tank, that can shoot metal, like nuclear missiles from anywhere in the world. It's, it's bad. It's basically the plot of every action movie ever from the 80s and 90s. Rambo! That's, if you think Rambo, one man, whole army, that was Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear was one of the early games that had a fully fleshed out story. Snake sent out to outer heaven when, when Grey Fox. When Grey, who's Grey Fox? Grey Fox is another fox sound agent with MIA and then your, your commander, Big Boss, he posts you to go see what happened. You first need to meet the local resistance before rescuing Grey Fox, who informs you of Metal Gear. Then you needed to find out the chief engineer to find out how to destroy it. So you just go for the one, get the next thing, get the next thing. That's how it goes. It's like an action movie. Once you have this and you take out the Metal Gear, Snake discovers that Big Boss was behind the entire operation. His goal was to create 
the new superpower. It's a plot twist, but and it's a lot, but and like we're skipping over a lot of things. But trust me, it's great, it's fantastic. If you like that kind of thing, it's chef's kiss. You must remember before this we had Mario was man, take a mushroom, lose his mind, find his girl. The game came from the mind of a 24-year-old, Hideo Kojima. One of it, if not the most recognizable video game directors out there. If you know anything about directors, he's your guy. Yeah, he's, he's the video game director out there. So Metal Gear was intended to be a scrolling shooter like a bullet hell, you know those planes for the MSX2. But anyways, it's limited hardware, it didn't allow you to have enough um, bullets, bullets on, the on the screen. <laughs> yeah, it was running out and then he was like, nah, let's use this limitation as a strength. So Metal Gear became about avoiding combat rather than like actively going after like fighting everybody. Just so getting in a box and getting just hiding out the whole time. Yeah, shrink, it's shrink, 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 they can see you. It's essentially like hide and seek. That's, that's innovation. Bro. But for agents. But for agents. So the game had you traverse out to heaven, pick up weapons, save hostages and defeat some bosses. Some action stuff and some game stuff. But that's what set it apart. So... Metal Gear was one of the first games to adopt this stealth approach, like the stealth mechanics. You need to infiltrate the base, get the, the stuff, and then go there. If an enemy was alerted to your presence, then you needed to get out of there because you would first investigate for you, you, you know, like, you would want to... F you can't just shoot them, you must slit their throat. The guns mustn't go off. The game was proper agent stuff. Yeah. But if you spotted, then reinforcements are sent through. The only way out through you mess is going through them, getting out to the safe area or entering into the boss battle. This shift to avoid combat made these moments feel more like puzzles than action games. It was more important to get the hell out of there safe. Yeah, because like running is way better. That's that's what real people do. And because Snake needs to make his life more difficult and of course yours is now more difficult. You start off the game unarmed because of course you don't need weapons to go with them. So you need to pick up weapons from them, like secondary cash converters from them, without alerting guards. And then you can't shoot them because you're going to alert them. So now you can't even use them all the time. So it forced the player to, to play more smartly and you couldn't just go in guns blazing like, like I would do. And all of this, all of these mechanics was happening in 1987. I told you, you're the year of the magic. It's crazy if you just think about every other game was basic, but this man came with a story. That's where the innovation and this change came in forever. Metal Gear would leave a lasting impression on the world, but that would not come for another 11 years with the release of Metal Gear Solid, a game that your friends would make you watch while they played alone. And then you're the only one with one controller and your friends just go, oh, that looks fun. And then you go, oh, I'm going to show you this thing. And then they must watch for another hour. You think I'm making jokes here or telling a wild tale. This is what Chadley actually did to me growing up. It was a long day I visited him many times just to watch Anyways, this. see, Metal Gear came at a time where arcades were still popular and the new stealth mechanics might have been a, a lot for players. Even the sequel did, uh, did okay. But in 1998, Everything would change with the release of Metal Gear Solid. Now an even more powerful hardware, MGS embraced the stealth oriented approach. The new game added several new mechanics to boost the stealth approach. Players could now knock on walls to dis distract the guard. What? You could crawl under objects or just remain hidden so that people would walk past you see their feet and you safe. Or you could use the radar to keep track of enemy patrols, you just don't move in those spaces. But also, enemies will track your footprints, so that they can, you could use it to distract them. You run around the box, they follow the footprints, and then you're gone. Exactly. It's actually pretty like life-changing. These mechanics might be unique for Metal Gear Solid, but it also set the stage for the rise of style-focused titles. Also following the release of Metal Gear Solid, Tenchu, and Thief, games such as Hitman and Splinter Cell all adopted the stealth approach, encouraging and rewarding players for a more silent approach. It's like a fart. Yeah, it's like silent but violent. It stinks up in here. We, we don't encourage violence. I encourage violence. Always choose violence. <laughs> this game became so popular that many, many other games started incorporating stealth segments to just mix up the success. It did prove the popularity of the mechanic and approach to gaming across the world. Thief creator Tom Leonard said Metal Gear Solid's 
success convinced them that experimental style gameplay could be very marketable and revitalized the team in closing months of the project. I'm well, quoting him. When I act like this, I'm quoting just so you know. Is that your quoting hands? Yes, quote hands. Well, Metal Gear Solid is a game largely responsible for the stealth boom. It was Metal Gear that pioneered these basics. Technically, Metal Gear was responsible for laying down the foundations. All of this back in 1987. And this wasn't its only contribution. Storytelling wasn't something new to gaming, right? Games such as Legend of Zelda, Metroid, and even Donkey Kong all started building stories around games. It wasn't just save the save the princess, go home. No, it was the real complicated situations. Metal Gear was another major contribution to the popularity. Popularity. That word, popularization. Proper, you know the word, Popularization. Man. Yeah, <laughs> some of us can't say big words. Yeah. Thanks to the creator, Hideo Kojima, his love for movies really showed us. The Metal Gear series would span seven mainstream titles following the exploits of Solid Snake and Big Boss. And despite the military focus, the games would often dive into the ideas of the military industrial complex, war trauma, post politic truth, and even fake news. This is like before it was even. In 1987, they had fake news. Silico Knights founder Dennis Dayak. Dayak. Is that Dayak. Dayak. I have no idea. Dayak. I sound like um, in Wanderlust. Yeah. Dayak. Um, you. <laughs> I missed the point that what he was going to say because I was just taking in. Yeah. While Unreal and Gears of War creator Cliff Pazinski, he cited that military themes and action gameplay of Metal Gear as a major influence on his work. He also named Gears of War in homage to the Gears, to Metal Gear as well. Metal Gears of War. Metal Gear. So basically, this is an, a military anime. Think about it. Like the anime, it has, you got your military base and then it's like, it's got the anime magic system built into it somehow. Think it's about a, it. Think about all those bosses and the weird powers. It's, it's anime. And now back to our regular viewing because Shadley is... It's, it's anime. anime. No, it is anime. Think about it. Think about the power. Metal Gear was one of the early games that adopted the idea of breaking the fourth wall. Everyone remembers Psycho Mantis breaking the fourth wall by reading the player's memory card. Yeah, that's Or the weird. trippy end sequence of Metal Gear Solid 2 when Campbell went glitchy and started telling you that you are in the game. Yeah, but this team has actually been around since the original. I mean, after you reach building 3's 100th floor basement in Out Heaven, Big Boss actually tells you to abort the mission by turning off the game system. Can you imagine how weird that must have been for players back then? So there's no memory card system in your spirit at all. Yeah, hey. yeah uh, no. That's not the only instant. During Snake's fight with Big Boss, Jennifer tells Snake that, he's using a ci- that using a cigarette will buy him one more time escape out of it, by two out of heaven. By slowing down the timer, of course, this would self and the self destruct um, sequence. Yeah, it would slow down the, the self destruct sequence. I don't know how, because like cigarettes speed up the self destruct sequence. This came from a time when the fourth wall breaks weren't popular, when gaming was still party training. Can you fathom how mental this must have been? Yeah, but it was like still in nappies. Like gaming was young then. But Metal Gear, it wasn't the only one that pioneered video game storytelling. But it definitely influenced audiences and how studios approached the medium. Even if the games weren't for you. That's what I told myself when Shadow was playing alone. There's just no way you can deny its influence and impact. A true titan of the industry, born in 1987. I'm Yasin Bonson, that is who I am. I mean, Metal Gear Solid, but I'm talking about 1987 and the titan. You're not the only one born in 1987. I know, but I'm the most important one. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what you think. You must use the other controller to play the uh, game. You can buy your own controller now, you have money. And so we come to the end of the coffee and content for today. So why don't you share your favorite game in the Metal Gear series? And you can catch us on all the socials so you don't want to miss a single damn thing. Also tell us your favorite moment in the Metal Gear because I feel like it was such just great moments. We will be back next week and we return to the couch for more coffees and controllers. I say it's a couch, but it's just chairs. Chairs, a couch, coffee, and controllers. And but, a garage, garage as well. And, and, and a garage. garage. But sponsor us a couch, please. Or buy us. We only have a coffee, please. Nice.